Hello, young Harding. You're early. Yes, I'm finished, Doc. It was too late to start anything fresh. What's all this fuss about in the papers tonight, Mr. Cavell? Wars and rumors of wars. Crying wolf? Someday a wolf will come. These fools are capable of anything. In that case, what happens to medical research? It has to stop. That'll mess me up. Mess you up. Mess everything up. My God, if war gets loose again. Happy Christmas, everyone. While Sherwood watched their flocks by night, don't see dead on the ground. What's the matter with you fellas? Oh, that. Huh. This little upset across the water doesn't mean anything. Threatened men live long and threatened wars never occur. <laughs> Another speech by him. I tell you, there's nothing in it. It's just to buck people up about the air estimates. Now, why meet wars halfway? Why not look on the bright side of things? You're all right? Your business is going up? You've got a jolly wife? A pretty home? All's right with the world, eh? Mm. All's right with the world. Certainly. Passworthy, you should have been called Pippa Passworthy. Oh, and Cabal, you've been smoking too much. You're not, uh, you're not eupeptic. <laughs> oh, come on, it's Christmas. Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. Nice toys they have nowadays. Nice toys. The toys we had were simpler. Ever so much simpler. Noah's arcs and wooden soldiers. Nothing complex like these. You know, I wonder sometimes that perhaps all these new toys aren't a bit too much for them. It teaches them to use their hands. And I suppose their grandchildren will see even more wonderful things. Progress. Progress. I'd like to see the wonders they have seen. Don't be too sure of progress. Oh, listen to the incurable pessimist. What's to stop progress nowadays? War. Firstly, there isn't going to be a war. And secondly, war doesn't stop progress. It stimulates progress. Yeah, war can be a highly stimulating thing. But you can overdo a stimulant. Oh, well, after all, I'll be exaggerating the horrors of war. Don't we rather overdo that song? I'm not sure the last one wasn't as bad as some people make out. They didn't worry. Something, something great seemed to have got hold of us. Something greater still may get hold of us next time. If we don't end war, war will end us. Well, what can you do? Yeah. What can we do? Good world to all men. <laughs> Real old-fashioned Christmas this year. Fresh little snow with a nip in the air, eh? What is that? Sounded like a gun. Guns here. Merry Christmas, Cabell. Here's to another good year for all of us. Another year of recovery, eh? <laughs> What's that shite doing now? Yes. Well, it must be anti-aircraft maneuvers. Maneuvers at Christmas? No. Listen, guns again. Yeah. Good out, Katie. The hills are high up from the street. Yeah. Mobilization. Oh, God. Perhaps it's only precaution on this issue. The unknown aircraft passed over Sea Beach and dropped bombs within a few hundred yards of the waterworks. They then turned seaward again. By this time, they'd been picked up with the searchlights and the battleship Dinosaur. Before they could mount out of range, she had opened upon them with her anti aircraft gun. Unfortunately, without result. Of course, everyone said this time they'll start on any declaration of war. Oh, listen. We do not yet know the nationality of these aircraft, though of course there could be little doubt of that place of origin. But before all things, it is necessary for the country to keep calm. No doubt the losses suffered by the fleet are serious. The losses of the fleet? <laughs> and it is imperative that the whole nation should at once stand to arms. Orders for a general mobilization have been issued, and the precautionary civilian organization against gas will at once be put into operation. Our instructions have just come to hand. 
We shall cut off for five minutes, and then read you the general instructions. Please call in all your friends. Call in everyone you can. You've got your stimulant pass with you. Something great has got you. War has come. My God, if they've attacked the declaration of war, then it's vengeance. No quarter, vengeance. Punishment. Condign punishment, or else the end of civilization altogether. But it's just possible there's some mistake. You know, I cling to that. If not, then it's war to the knife. No, it's, it's not a war, it's extermination of dangerous vermin. A vermin hunt without pause or pity. Well, good night. surrender life to the brutes and fools. I loved you. I wanted to serve you and make life happy for you. But think of the things that may happen to them. Were we selfish? You weren't afraid to bear. We were children yesterday. We're anxious. But we're not afraid.
Why does it come to this? God, why do we have to murder each other? Go, my friend. That is my guess. It's a bad guess. Funny if I'm, if I'm killed by my own poison. Quick, get this out.
God. What is the use of trying to save this mad world? Oh, Father, if only you could get some sleep. How can I sleep? See how they wander out to die. Yes. 
It's a good prefect in this machine. I oil it and turn it over at times. You think it'll go fast someday still? Oh, I'm not one of your petrol hoarders. But all the same, that engine turns over still. Why, I remember when I was a lad, when it was new, we thought nothing of going a hundred miles in it. A whole hundred miles. Less than three hours I've done it in. Look at that sort of thing's all gone now. Gone forever, eh? Huh? Right, sir. Yep, yep. Richard. What is it? You won't leave me mad. Why, darling? I thought I heard an aeroplane this morning. A dawn. I thought it was a dream, but... Nonsense. I tell you, flying's finished. We shall never get in the air again. Never.
I remember this place well. I used to live over there for years. Ever heard of a man named Podworthy? Harding? Yes. Yes. Here he comes now. So you're hot. I seem to remember something about you. You were a young man. You're John Cabell. I remember you. I used to visit your house here endless years ago before the wars. You're still flying. Your hair is grey, but you look young enough. Our oh, things here. Who's in control of this place? Oh, we have our chief, the uh, warlord. Mm, the usual thing. I want to look up your warlord. Where can we go and talk? In my laboratory is the best thing. It's just over here. Right. <laughs> You can't go in there. You're under arrest. You've got to go with me to the chief. All in good time. I must see this gentleman first. When are you going to go with me? Orders and orders. The box, perhaps? Where is this man? Why is he brought here? Well, you're coming up with Dr. Hardy. He has to be brought here. I must deal with him. Here, you can't go to him. That's impossible. He must come to you. But send another man for him. Send three men. He has got to be brought here. So that's the sort of man your boss is. Not an unusual type. Everywhere we find these little semi-military upstarts robbing and fighting. That's what endless warfare has led to. Brigandage. What else could happen? But we, who are all that are left of the old engineers and mechanics, have pledged ourselves to salvage the world. We have the airways, all that's left of them. We have the seas. And we have ideas in common. The Brotherhood of Efficiency. The Freemasonry of Science. We're the last trustees of civilization when everything else has failed. I've been waiting for this. I'm yours to command. Not mine. Not mine. No more buses. Civilization's to command. Tell him you'll have to come. He won't come on foot. Well, we'll have to carry him. I don't know what'll happen to me, sir, if you don't come. Who are you? Do you know this country's at war? At war? Do that, then. We must clean that up. What do you mean we must clean that up? All war. Who are you, I say? The law. Law and sanity. I am the law here. I said law and sanity. Where do you come from? Who are you? Wings over the world. Well, you know you can't come into a country like this in this fashion. I'm here. Do you mind if I sit down? And now, for the fourth time, who are you? I tell you, wings over the world. That's nothing. What government do you under? Common sense. I belong to world communications. We just run ourselves. Eh? Yeah. You run into trouble if you try and land here in wartime? What's the game? Order and trade. Trade, eh? Did you have any munitions? Not a line of business. Fuel, spare parts, we've got planes, we've got planes. I've got boys that have trained a bit on the ground. We've no fuel in hampers us. We might do a deal. We might. I know where I can get some fuel. I've got my plans later, but if you can manage a uh, temporary accommodation, we do business. World communications helps no one to make war. End war, end war. I want to make victorious peace. I seem to have heard that phrase before, when I was a young man. But it made no end of war. Now look here, Mr. Radiator. Let's see how we stand. Come down to actuality. The way you swagger, you don't seem to realize you're under arrest, you and your machine. You'll find other planes looking for me if I happen to be delayed. We'll deal with them later. I even start a trading agency here, they like. I've no objection. The first thing we shall want is to get our planes in the air again. Quite a laudable ambition. But our new order has an objection to private aeroplanes. The impudence. I'm not talking about private aeroplanes. Our aeroplanes are public aeroplanes. This is an independent, sovereign state at war. I know nothing about any old order. I'm the chief here, and I'm not taking any orders, old or new, from you. I suppose I walked into trouble. Yeah, you can take that as right. Where do you come from? I flew from my headquarters in Bazaar this morning. 
We have some hundreds of new type planes and we're building more, fast. The factories are working again. We're gradually restoring order and trade in the whole Mediterranean area. We're scouting this region now to see how things are. You found out. This is an independent, sovereign state. Yes, we must talk about that. We don't discuss it. We don't approve of independent, sovereign states. You don't approve? We mean to stop them. That's war, if you will. Well, I think we know how we stand. Burton, take this man. If he gives you any trouble, club him. You hear that, Mr. Wings, over your wits? My friends know my whereabouts. If I don't come back, they'll send a force to find me. Perhaps they won't find you. They'll find you. They'll find me ready. Take him to the detention room downstairs. Now, was that wise? Wise? Yes, wise, to quarrel with him at once. Quarrel with him? Confound you, begin to quarrel with me. <laughs> you must clean that up. Clean that up? My war. There's things behind him. Things behind him? Some sort of aerial bus driver standing up to me. Like an equal. So you lost your temper and you bullied him. I don't bully, I just handle the man. He's the first real aviator that has come this way for years. Think of what that means, my dear. You want the airplanes, don't you? You want your airplanes put in order? A really clever man could have had some of those machines up long ago. I'm sure of it. Along comes this stranger who's going to clean me up. You expect me to hand my planes over to him, lock, stock, and barrel? Why talk nonsense? You could have persuaded him under supervision. Supervision? It's all oops. I've got here to supervise him. It'd be too much for him. Oh, of course, if it's going to be too much for you, why don't you hang him and hide his machine before the others are after you? I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Now, this stranger hasn't taken me by surprise. I knew he was coming. Yes, I knew he was coming. I felt this conspiracy of air bus drivers brewing somewhere in the world. I felt they were getting ahead with their airplanes down there somewhere. Very well, now's our chance. We've got this fella bottled up. They won't even begin to miss him for days. I've got everything fixed now for an attack straight away on the Floss Valley to the old coal and shale pits where there's oil too. Then, up we buzz. <laughs> to our needs. That's quite a simple business. Nothing remains but the conclusive bonding of the hills. Then for a time, we can hope for a rich, rewarding peace. A peace of the strong man armed who keepeth his house. And now at this supreme crisis, you, God, our master mechanic, refuse your help. Where are my planes? Just more difficult than you think. Our few machines are hopelessly old. We'll have 20 sound ones. To be exact, 19. We'll never get the others off the ground. The thing can't be done as you imagine it. I want assistance. What assistance? Your prisoner. But you want that chap in black that wings over the world? You want him released? You know it is business. I don't, enough. 
Make him my technical advisor. I don't trust you technical chaps. And you won't get an aeroplane now. I want those planes. Well, if you get it. Then I want Dr. Harding out too. Well, the socialists. I can't help that. If anybody in every town can adapt to that crude oil for our aeroplanes, it's Harding. If not, it can't be done. Oh, we've well, had a bit of an argument with Harding. He's the only man who can do this work for you. I have nothing to do with poison gas. You've got the knowledge of I have to wring it out of you. The state, your mother, your father, the totality of your interests. No discipline can be too severe for the man that denies that by word or deed. Nonsense! We have a duty to civilization. You and your sort are driving us straight back to eternal barbarism. But this is pure treason. I protest against being dragged away from my work. Confound your silly war, your war and all the rest. All my life has been interrupted and wasted and spoiled by war. I am not standing any longer. But this is treason, treason, can stop it. We've need of your service. Tell what you want. You're constructed. You're under my orders now, and under no other orders in the world. I'm master here. I'm the state. I need fuel and gas. Neither fuel nor gas. You refuse? Absolutely. I don't want to be forced to extremities. May I have a word? I understand you want all of those out-of-date clocks of yours that you call your Air Force to fly again, and fly well. They shall! With the help of that man, Cabell, you have in the cells, Dr. Harding here, and we even have a dozen of your planes in the air again. You! You're a traitor to civilization. I won't touch! If you will give me Cabell, did you leave me free to talk with Harding? I promise you, you'll see your air force. A third of it, at any rate, in the sky again. You'll talk as if you're driving a bargain with me. I'm sorry, Chief. It's not I who make these conditions. This is the nature of things. We're going to have technical services. We're going to have scientific help without treating the men who give it to you properly. That's what I said all along. You're bullying too hard, my dear. There's a limit to bullying. Why? You can't make a dog hunt by beating it? I want those planes! Chief and Commander, the help. Our war leader, our peacemaker, Rudolph the Victorious. <laughs> my captains, my commanders, I greet you. Could anything in life be better than this moment? You face difficulties and dangers. But now at this bright moment of victory, we relax to gather strength for the supreme effort that will make this land forever ours. Yeah. A man's land we are making, a land for strength and for courage. None but the brave deserve the land. None but the brave deserve the fair. <laughs> our dear old world, our dear old world. Some of us are there to run down our land. It isn't this, it isn't that, it isn't what it used to be. We haven't got chemists. Well, who wants chemists? <laughs> they don't print books anymore. Who wants books to muddle their thoughts and their ideas? We can't travel anymore. Well, is our land good enough for us? Okay. I wanted to look at you. I am at your service, madam. You're the most interesting thing that has happened in every town for years. You are. Me. You come from outside. I've begun to forget there was anything outside. 
I want to hear them, Mum. May I offer you my only chair? You know, I'm not a stupid woman. I'm sure. This life here is limited. War, always going on and never ending. Flags, marching. Oh, I adore the chief. I've always adored him since he took control of the pestilence days when everyone else lost heart. He rules. He's firm. Everyone, everyone finds him strong and attractive. I can't complain. I have everything that is to be had here. And yet, this is a small, limited world we live in. You bring in the breath of something greater. When I saw you swooping down out of the air, when I saw you marching into the town hall, I felt this man lives in a greater world. And you spoke of the Mediterranean, in the east, of your camps and factories. I read about the Mediterranean, and Egypt, and Greece, and India. Oh, I can read a lot of those old books. I'm not like most of the younger people here. I learned a lot before education stopped and schools closed down. I want to see that world. Skies, snowy mountains, blue seas, sunshine, parks. If I had my way, you could fly to all that in a couple of hours. If you were free, and if I was free, I don't suppose any man has ever understood any woman since the beginning of things. You don't understand our imagination, how wild our imagination can be. I wish I were a man. Oh, I were a man! What are your people trying to do to us? What are you going to do to this boss of mine? The immediate question seems, what does he mean to do to me? Something violent and foolish, unless I prevent it. That's how I see things. And if he kills you? We shall come here and clean things up. But if you're killed, how can you say we? We go on. That's how things are. We are taking hold of things. In science and government in the long run, no man is indispensable. The human things go on. We, forever. I see. And this warlike state of ours here. It has to vanish, like the Tyrannosaurus and the saber-toothed type. cross-examination. But the gist of it is that away there in Basra, new airplanes are rising night and day, like hornets round a hornet's nest. What happens to me is a small affair. They'll finish you. The new world of United Airmen will finish you. Listen, you can almost hear them coming now. Not a bit of it. What he says is the truth. What he says is bluff. Make peace with the other and let him go. That means surrender of our sovereign independence. But more machines will be coming and more and more. Man, he's here. Hostage for that good behavior. Come, madam, enough of this little diplomatic mission of yours. You've got the subtlety of a bullfrog. <laughs> I don't know what she's been saying to you. I don't much care. There's no making peace between you and me. It's your world or mine, and it's going to be mine. Royal threats of swarms of hornets and so on. You're a hostage, remember that. Don't be too sure you win. So just sit here and think that over, Mr. Wings over the world. Now get one of the other slides and look at these engine barrel braces. I could get to my plane in the wires there. So Mr. Moody can trust me. You still have to make a job of it. I managed to get your reserve petrol. Let me have that for this plane. Good. It won't be easy to make a getaway. These oil pump connections aren't very good, but we'll have to risk it. I think we'll manage to all right now that Harding knows his part of the job. 
It's in a better world than it used to be. I rebel against this progress. What has this progress, this world civilization done for us? Machines and marvels. They've built these great cities of theirs, yes. They've prolonged life, yes. They've conquered nature, they say, and made a great white world. Is it any jollier than the world used to be in the good old days, when life was short and hot and merry and the devil took the hindmost? All the same, what can we do about it? Rebel. Rebel now, now, now is the time. Why now in particular? But because of this space gun business. Because of this project to shoot human beings at the stars. People don't like it, shooting humans away to hard, frozen darkness. They're murmuring. They've murmured before and nothing came of it. Because they had no leader. But now, suppose someone cried, Halt! Stop this progress! Suppose I shouted to the world, make an end to this progress. I could talk, talk. Radio is everywhere. This modern world is full of voices. I'm a master craftsman. I have the right to talk. Yes, but will they listen to you? They'll listen, trust them. If I shout, arise, awake, stop this progress before it is too late. inside their cities as we had, so they had to stick them up into the daylight, what there was of it. They had no trouble in mixed and conditioned air. Everybody lived half out of doors. They had windows of crippled glass. The age of windows lasted four centuries. We never seemed to realize that we could light the interior of our houses with sunshine of our own, so there was no need to stick them up into the high in the air. They were all tired, and they had a disease called colds. Everybody had colds, and they coughed and sneezed and ran the eyes. Sneeze? What sneeze? Oh, you know. A tissue. A tissue? Everything is a tissue. That must have been funny. Not so funny as you think. And you remember all that, great-grandfather? Well, I remember some of it. Colds we had. And indigestion, too, from the queer bad foods we had. Oh, it was a poor life, never really well. Did people laugh at it? Well, they had a way of grinning at it. They used to call it humour. We had to have a lot of humour. I lived through some horrid times, my dear. Oh, horrid. Horrid? I didn't want to hear about that. The wars, the wandering sickness, and all those things. None of that will come again, great granddad, ever. Well, not if progress goes on. They keep on inventing new things now, don't they? And making life lovelier and lovelier. Lovelier, yes. And bolder. I suppose I'm an old man, my dear, but some of it seems like going too far. This space gun of theirs that they keep on shooting. What is this space gun, great grandfather? Well, it's a gun that is charged by electricity. It, it, it's a lot of guns inside one another, and each one discharges the gun next inside. I don't properly understand it, but the cylinder it shoots out last goes swish right away from the earth. I wish I could fly around the moon. Well, that in time. Won't you come back to your history pictures again? I'm glad I didn't live in the old world. I know John Cabal and his airman tidied it all up. See John Cabal, great granddad? Well, you can see him in your pictures. But you saw him when he lived. You really saw him? Yes. I saw the great John Cabal with my own eyes when I was a little boy. He was a lean, brown old man with hair as white as mine. He was the great grandfather of our Oswald Cabal, the president of our council.
I take it the space gun's passed all its preliminary trials, and there's nothing left now but to choose the two where to go. That's going to be the trouble. Thousands of young people have been applying, young men and young women. I never met the moment so attractive. Practically, the gun was perfect now. There are risks, but reasonable risks. And the position of the moon in the next three or four months gives us the best conditions for getting there. It's only the choice of the two now that matters. Well, there are going to be difficulties. That man, Theotokopoulos, is talking on the radio about it. He's a fantastic fellow. Yes, but he's making trouble. It's not going to be easy to choose these young people. With all these thousands offering themselves, we've looked into thousands of cases. We've rejected everyone who's in perfect health, or anyone who had friends who objected. And the fact is, we want you to talk to two people. There's Raymond Passworthy of General Fabric, you know him? Yes, I know. And his son. We want you to see the son, Maurice Passworthy. Why? He asks to go. We think you ought to see him. He's waiting here. Is Maurice Passworthy there? He's on his way. Good. You want to talk to me? Gibbies, I came straight to you. You're asking a favor. A very big favor. I want to be one of the first two human beings to go around the moon. It means danger. Great hardship, anyhow. You realize there's an even chance of never coming back alive. A still greater chance of coming back a cripple. Give me credit for not minding that, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of you young people don't mind that. But why should I give you a favor? Well, I... I'm the son of a friend of yours, and uh, people seem to feel you want to send someone who don't know, sir. Go on. We've talked about this over and over again. We? Yes, both of us. It's her idea even more than it's mine. Her idea? Who is she? Someone much closer to you than I am, sir. Go on. It's Catherine, your daughter. She says you can't possibly send anybody's child but your own. I might have known. Then I'm going to put it to the world plainly. Is this thing to go on? Or are we sane and normal human beings to put an end to it? And an end to all that follows forever? There's no attempt to land on the moon. 
When, when is this great experiment to be made? How much longer have we got before they go? When the space gun is ready. Sometime this year, do you mean? Soon. And then, is there no way of saving our children from this madness? But would it be saving our children? Well, here they are. Father, where's the girls? Yes, you're the girls. It's enough. Two hours ago. Already? Why not? But my son, he's of age. He's volunteered. Yes, but I want to talk it over first. I must talk it over. Why have you announced this so soon? There is still time to talk it over, isn't there? Not so very long now, Father. We've got several months yet, surely. It's just one month and three days. Everything's ready. And the moon's coming into the right position even while we're talking now. They're leaving it a month longer to make sure. You mean you're going in four weeks? Four weeks? I forbid it. Yes, then, your compass is right. This thing must not be. It's human sacrifice. Struck fire. All the people are excited and angry. Some are already going out of the city towards the space gun. Nothing is wanted now but deeding. We must go right on with this. To the space gun. And so we end an age. Young people. Just beginning life. You want to go into that outer horror. Why don't you send somebody who's sick of life? They want fit young people, alert and quick. And we're fit young people. We can observe and come back and tell. Cabell, I just want to ask you one plain question. Why did you let your daughter dream of going on this mad moon journey? Because I love her. And I want her to live to the best effect. Dragging out life to the last possible second is not living to the best effect. The nearer the form is sweeter than me. The best of life, Password, it lies nearest to the edge of death. I'm a broken man. I don't know where honor lies. You haven't got things right, Passworthy. Our fathers and our fathers' fathers cleaned up the old order of things because it killed children. It killed those who were unprepared for death. Because it tormented people in vain. Because it outraged human pride and dignity. Because it was an ugly spectacle of waste. But that was only a beginning. There's nothing wrong in suffering if you suffer for a purpose. Our revolution didn't abolish danger or death. It simply made danger and death worthwhile. Cabal. Cabal, the gun's in urgent danger. It's a race against time, not a savage. Fear of Copulus is out of the crowd of people already. He's going to the space gun now. They're going to break it up. They say it's the symbol of your tyranny. And their weapons? Bars of metal. They can smash delicate apparatus. They can do endless mischief. But you have a traffic control. Can't they produce the police? Very few. We've nothing but the gas of peace and it isn't ready. It'll take hours yet. We must hold this crowd back at any cost for a time until the gas of peace is ready. This... and you needn't go. They won't smash the gun. Suppose the gun was fired now. Wouldn't the cylinder reach the moon? It would miss and fly into outer space. It's five now. If the gun were fired before seven... Then it could be. Yes. Then... We go now. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know what to say, but don't go. Don't go. Oh, but, Father, we must go now. We may never go. And then for the rest of our lives, we feel we've shirked and lived in vain. We must go now.
Quickly, this way. If you go up to the platform, we'll guard this below. Right. Contract all your muscles when the concussion comes. In five minutes, you'll be able to get loose and move about.
Is there never to be any age of happiness? Is there never to be any rest? Rest enough for the individual man. Too much, too soon, and we call it death. But for man, no rest and no ending. He must go on, conquest beyond conquest. First this little planet and its winds and waves, and then all the laws of mind and matter that restrain him. Then the planets about him. And at last, out across immensity to the sun. And when he has conquered all the deeps of space and all the mysteries of time, still he will be beginning. But we're such little creatures. Poor humanity is so fragile, so weak. Little, little animals. Little animals. And if we're no more than animals, we must snatch each little scrap of happiness and live and suffer and pass mattering no more than all the other animals do or have done. It is this or that. All the universe or nothing. Which shall it be? Which shall it be? 